Hello and welcome to EC Electronics. This is the part 23 of ISRO Technical Assistant Mock Test Series. So the 10 questions, if you're preparing for Technical Assistant Examination, you can attempt. And if you found the video useful, please do like, share and subscribe. Now let's see the 10 questions. Going to see the solutions of the 10 questions which you have already answered okay so let's see the questions one by one you can see the questions on board first question is for a voltage source to be neglected the terminals across the source should be dash so we uh, do the neglecting of voltage sources and current source etc while doing uh, superposition theorem and other theorems in network analysis and in that conditions we have to assume either open circuit or short circuit Likewise, we have to assume, right? Now, the question is, for a voltage source to be neglected, the terminal across the source should be dash. A, replaced by inductor, no. B, short-circuited, yes, that is the correct answer. C, replaced by some resistance, no. D, open-circuited, no. So, the correct answer is, when we are going to neglect a voltage source connected in between two terminals, the terminal should be short circuited for the case of a voltage source okay now if we are going to neglect a current source okay so this is a voltage source and if you are going to neglect the voltage source we are going to make it a short circuit and if you are going if you are going to uh, neglect a current source then the terminal should be open circuited okay open circuit for current source it is open circuit and for voltage source it is short circuit okay so this is the this is the most important thing you should be knowing while answering the question okay so the correct answer for your first question is option b which is short circuit that is when we are neglecting a voltage source we are creating a short circuit there okay correct answer is option b moving on to the second question Second question is from Kirchhoff laws. Kirchhoff current law is based on the law of conservation of dash A energy, B momentum, C mass, D charge. So Kirchhoff current law states that if you consider a node, then the algebraic sum of the currents coming to the node is equal to zero. We all know that current is nothing but the flow of charge, right? So when we are applying a Kirchhoff current law or KCL, we are actually applying the law of conservation of charge. It is not energy, it is charge. Okay. So, when we are applying KCL, we are talking about current. We all know that current is nothing but the flow of charges. So, we are talking about the conservation of charge. That is a net charge coming to the node is equal to the net charge flowing out of the node, which is nothing but current. Okay. So, correct answer here is option D, which is charge. I hope it is clear. Moving on to the third question. This is a numerical type of question, but very simple one. Question number three is, determine the current through the resistor R3. In uh, From the question figure, R3 has been chipped off or it has been uh, cut off. So anyway, the current I3 is marked. That is what we actually have to find. Okay, So I will draw the circuit for you. There is a voltage source. And the voltage source value is not given, but that is not relevant because the current produced by that source is directly given. So, we all, uh, we only need that, right? So, here there is a resistance and there is an end resistance, which is R3. And we need to find the current through it, which is marked as I3. Here the current is, 
yeah okay one minute so i'll remove it and mark it here so the current here is uh 25 milliampere it is a current flowing through this resistance which is r2 and there is one resistance r1 here this is r1 and the current flowing through that resistance is 10 milliampere right so this is i hope you can see it. this is 10 milliampere this is 25 milliampere and the current produced by the source is 60 milliamps okay so the 60 milliampere current you just have to think in a logical way you don't have to think about any laws or anything just consider that this 60 ampere current is coming we all know that for parallel connection current is different so the 60 ampere current has to split across these three branches so the first branch current is given to you 10 milliampere okay i'll write it little more neatly 10 milliampere okay so this is 10 milliampere this is 25 milliampere and what is this very simple right 60 minus 10 plus 25 will be your this branch current right so how much it will be 60 minus 10 minus 25 so it will be 25 milliampere okay so the current i3 is 25 milliampere so i have not talked about any laws here but this is actually the application of kcl or kirchhoff current law so the current is getting splitted across the various branches so the total current coming towards this branch or uh, towards this direction it is the total sum of currents getting splitted across the branch and the current splitting is happening okay so 60 minus 10 minus 25 so total current coming is 60 minus of you can write it like this okay 60 minus 10 plus 25 will be your this branch current which is i3 and that is the current flowing through r3 which is nothing but 25 milliamperes and the correct answer here is option a i really hope you understood okay so for third question correct answer is option a moving on to the fourth question again that is a numerical question but a very simple one fourth question is you can see the question on board determine the current if 20 coulomb charge passes a point in 0.2 i seconds okay very basic thing okay so we all know current i equal to it is the rate of flow of charges we have talked about this just uh two three minutes before right so i equal to q by t that is we are going to uh, measure the rate of flow of charge now a 20 coulomb charge is passing a point in 0.25 seconds means the time is 0.25 right so this will be your current 20 by 0.25 is 80 amperes okay correct answer is option d 80 amperes is the current okay so the other options are 10 ampere 20 ampere and 2 amperes so correct answer will be just apply q by t that is i equal to q by t which is 80 amperes that is option d is your correct answer then fifth question fifth question is Find the force on a charge 2 coulomb in a field 1 volt per meter. Okay, so the field electric field or the field value is given E equal to 1 volt per meter. So this is electric field. If you look at the unit, you can find this V by distance, which is electric field. And that is 1 volt per meter. That is E value is given to you. Q equal to 2 coulombs. Now you need to find the force force on charge 2 coulomb in the field 1 volt per meter so f equal to q into e is the equation 2 into 1 that is 2 newtons will be your will be the force on that charge so when a charge is placed in an electric field the field will in, uh, exert some force right so that force is f e f equal to q into e so 2 into 1 that is 2 newtons okay correct answer is option c sixth question you can see the question on board two charges now this is from basic uh, coulomb slow two charges one coulomb and minus four coulomb exist in air that is these two uh, charges are placed adjacent to each other what is the direction of force between these two charges now if you see the nature of 
or the sign of these two charges one is one coulomb and another one is minus four coulombs so these two charges are of opposite polarity and due to that they will attract if the charges were of equal uh, polarity or of equal sign they will repel so like charges repel and unlike charges attract right so that is the nature or that is the concept so here the options are that is you need to find the force or the uh, direction of force one coulomb and minus four coulomb okay what is the direction of force you need to find i'll just mark it as f now i'll read the options so a the direction of force is away from one coulomb no since these are of opposite signs they will attract okay then b away from minus 4 no c from 1 coulomb to minus 4 coulomb and d from minus 4 coulomb to 1 coulomb so generally the charges will be from 1 coulomb to minus 4 coulomb okay positive to negative so the charge of attraction or the force of attraction is from 1 coulomb to minus 4 coulomb will be the force of attraction so the most important point is that if they are of opposite signs they will attract that is force will be towards otherwise they will be repelling okay correct answer here is option c which is force of attraction is from 1 coulomb to that is this will be the direction of force to minus 4 coulomb which is option c moving on to the seventh question Seventh question is from EMT. Find the standing wave ratio when the load impedance of 250 ohm is connected to a 75 ohm line. That is the load impedance is given and the uh, yeah the line impedance or the characteristic impedance of the line is also given. Okay. So you need to find what is the standing wave ratio. The equation for standing wave ratio in terms of the load impedance and the characteristic impedance is SWR that is standing wave ratio is equal to load impedance ZL by characteristic impedance of the transmission line or line impedance Z0. Okay, here load impedance is 250 ohms by characteristic impedance of line or line impedance is 75. That is 3.33 is the there is no unit. Okay, so that is the value for the standing wave ratio and the correct answer here is option D. Okay, ZL by Z0 is the standing wave ratio. Option D is your correct answer. Moving on to the 8th question. The 8th question is from Opens. So, the question is for the output of inverting amplifier. So, uh, there is no mentioning of Opam in the question uh, as such but by looking into the options and by reading the op the question you can you can get a clue that the question is from opam session so for the output of inverting amplifier so we generally have talked about the inverting and the non inverting configurations in opams only right so so it has to be from opams so eight for uh, eighth question for the output of inverting amplifier what is the equation that is a question v out equal to a v in no, that is not the equation for inverting configuration. It is inverting. So, it is not A V in. B, V out equal to minus A V in. Yeah, that is the correct answer. C, V out is equal to minus A V in minus V in 2. No, D none. So, the correct option is option B, V out, which is your output will be the inverted version that is output is actually 180 degree out of phase of your input into your gain of the amplifier okay so the gain of the amplifier is a and into v now why this minus is due to the 180 degree phase change or 180 degree the output is 180 degree out of phase from your input so that is why there is a minus sign okay I hope these are uh, basic things and also we have run a detailed video on this equations and various configurations of OPAM. Please do watch uh, that in the analog electronics playlist. Okay, correct answer is option B for the 8th question. Now moving on to the ninth question. 
नाइन्थ क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम माइक्रो कंट्रोलर दर इज एट जीरो फाइव वन माइक्रो कंट्रोलर इन अनसाइंड नंबर एडिशन द स्टेटस ऑफ विच ऑफ द बिट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट ओके ए ओवरफ्लो बी कैरी सी ए सी मीन्स ऑक्सिलरी कैरी डी पी एस डब्ल्यू सो इट जनरली इफ यू एड टू अनसाइंड नंबर वी हैव टू चेक फॉर द कैरी ओके एंड इफ यू आर एडिंग टू साइन नंबर वी हैव टू लुक फॉर ओवरफ्लो ओके सो दैट इज द केस फॉर अनसाइंड नंबर द स्टेटस ऑफ कैरी इज इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड फॉर साइन एडिशन we look for overflow okay so this actually the basics of addition and it is generally uh, it is related to the various fields of the psw registers of h051 so for unsigned number addition we look for carry flag if there is a carry then the numbers the, that means we have to look for the carry flag and if we are adding to un, uh, i mean to sign numbers then we have to look for the overflow flag okay so ninth question answer is option b carry flag 10th question when we add two numbers the destination address must be always dash that is when we are adding two numbers the destination address will be always dash a some immediate data b any register c accumulator d memory this is again from h051 session by looking at the options you can uh, find that it has to be from microcontrollers and this is from h051 okay so when we are adding two numbers always the destination is accumulator correct answer is option c accumulator okay so accumulator register we use for arithmetical and logical operations and in that in while performing this arithmetical and logical operated operations we keep the destination or the result will be getting stored into the accumulator that is the concept okay correct answer is option c is a correct answer for your 10th question so these are the 10 questions i have kept in this video I really hope that you found the video useful some questions uh, you may have confusion that uh, where from which or uh, which session the question is from for example the uh, ninth question you may have a confusion uh, but in the question papers they will be clearly given no uh, worries about that thing okay they will be clearly given about the uh, the session or the some hints will be given okay so uh, if you found the video useful please to give it a thumbs up and also share it with all your friends who is preparing for technical assistant or ex examination or for that matter any competitive examination and if you found the video useful give it a thumbs up and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching